Welcome to section 26 of bacteria. This is our bacteria overview figure, and in this video, we'll be discussing Pastorella multicida, Brucella species, and Francella tularensis, which you can see right here. So notice that we're combining these three into one video. To begin the story, notice that Batman is coming out of his Batmobile on a dirt bike. Even though he has his mask on, we all know that his real name is Bruce Wayne. Bruce sounds kind of like Brucella, which should help you remember that this part of the image is about Brucella. Next, notice that we've shown the Eiffel Tower, so we can be sure that this scene is taking place in France. Most people associate the Eiffel Tower with France, and France sounds like Francisella. Therefore, this should help you remember that this part of the image is all about Francisella tularensis. Finally, notice that we've shown this pastor guy. You can tell he's a pastor because he has a cross necklace around his neck and a bag of Bibles next to his feet. Pastor sounds like Pastorella, which should help you remember that this part of the image is all about Pastorella multicida. So now that we've introduced the three organisms, let's take a second to discuss the basic organization of the image. As you can see, the three organisms are in their own little areas. Brucella on the left, right here. Pastorella in the middle, right here. And Francisella on the right, over here. As we go through the image, we'll discuss Brucella first, then Francisella, and then we'll finish with Pastorella. After we're finished, you should be able to easily compartmentalize the information based upon how we've organized everything. Okay, with this in mind, let's continue discussing the image. As you can see, we've made the sunset appear very pink and red. Just like in our other videos, this is to help you remember that Brucella, Pastorella, and Francisella are all gram-negative. This is a gram stain of gram-negative cacobacilli, more specifically, Brucella. However, Pastorella and Francisella also exhibit a similar morphology when viewed under the microscope. Notice that the organism is red or pink appearing, and in some areas, it appears circular or caucus shaped and in other areas, it looks a bit more rod or bacilli shaped. This is why all three of these organisms are considered gram-negative cacobacilli. Okay, let's return to the image. Let's return our attention on Bruce Wayne and discuss Brucella in more detail. Brucella species are facultative intracellular organisms. This just means that they can survive inside or outside of cells. To help you remember this, we've shown Bruce Wayne ejecting his dirt bike out into the open world. He was just inside of his Batmobile, but now he's outside. I guess you could say he thrives inside of the Batmobile and outside of it on his bike, just like a facultative intracellular organism can survive inside or outside of cells. So Bruce Wayne ejecting out of his Batmobile on his dirt bike for facultative intracellular. Next, notice that there are rolling hills directly behind Bruce's dirt bike. Undulating is defined as having a smoothly rising and falling form or outline. So you could say that the hills are undulating. The undulating hills are here to help you remember that brucella is associated with an undulant fever. In other words, the fever is irregular, so it may be normal during the day and then spike in the evening. Unfortunately, in his haste, Batman accidentally appears to be colliding with a poor innocent civilian. Let's zoom up on him so you can see the details better. Ouch! Hit right in the back of the head with a dirt bike. That probably didn't feel too good. You can see that this farmer guy had set up his fresh farmer's market booth in an attempt to sell some fresh, unpasteurized milk, when, out of nowhere, Bruce Wayne crashed into the back of his head, causing some of his milk to spill onto the ground. The fresh farmer's market booth and milk getting spilled here should help you remember that brucella is associated with ingestion of unpasteurized dairy. Finally, the dirt bike, or dirt cycle, is our symbol for doxycycline. So the fact that Bruce Wayne is riding a dirt bike should help you remember that the treatment for brucella is doxycycline. Okay, now that we've covered Brucella, let's move on to discuss Francisella. Notice that we've added a rabbit next to the Eiffel Tower that's eating some green leafy vegetables. The rabbit is here to help you remember that rabbits are reservoirs for Francisella. Next, notice that we've shown a guy on a bench who appears to be fishing. Let's zoom up on him so you can see him better. It looks like he's simultaneously fishing and enjoying some Tic Tacs. Tic Tacs sound like ticks, so we've shown him eating some Tic Tacs to help you remember that ticks are a common reservoir for Francisella. Okay, if we zoom back out, you can see that we've shown a pavilion next to the Eiffel Tower. In a second, we'll add some people underneath this pavilion. Here, the pavilion will be our symbol for facultative intracellular, because it's technically outside, but still provides some shelter and protection from the outside world, just as if the people underneath the pavilion were inside of a home. So Francisella is facultative intracellular. As you can see, we've added two more characters to the scene, but they're a bit hard to see, so let's zoom up. Aha, it's the Joker himself, and he appears to be holding a granny hostage. No wonder Bruce Wayne came flying out of his Batmobile in a hurry. He's trying to stop this psycho villain from hurting the granny. As you can see, the Joker is cutting this granny's arm 
which is clearly quite distressing for her. The arm getting cut is here to help you remember that Francisella causes painful skin lesions. It appears to be too much for the granny to handle. Look at her holding up her hand against her forehead. She's stressed out, hot, and likely sweating from all of this anxiety. Her hand up on her head like this should help you remember that Francisella causes a fever. Also recall from our previous videos that a granny is our symbol for granuloma. So the granny right here should help you remember that Francisella is associated with granuloma formation. This is an image of a granuloma. Notice that there is a large circular pattern of walled off debris right here. This is surrounded by white blood cells, including lymphocytes and macrophages. Okay, also notice that there are a bunch of bug silhouettes around the Joker character's face. These are actually flies. They like to hang around him because he's a pretty nasty guy and doesn't care too much about staying clean. Anyway, the flies are here to help you remember that deer flies are reservoirs for Francisella. Now that we've zoomed back out, notice that we've added some minnow fish in the river. A minnow sounds like aminoglycoside, so the minnows here should help you remember that Francisella is treated with aminoglycosides. Okay, now that we've covered Brucella and Francisella, let's wrap up this video by discussing Pastorella multicida. As you can see, we've added a blue necklace to the pastor guy, and just like in our other videos, this is here to help you remember that Pastorella is oxidase positive. This is an image of the oxidase test, which we covered in more detail in section 20, which is our Neisseria overview video. Recall that if the organism is oxidase positive, then the disc will turn a blue or purple color, which is what we can see on the left right here. So remember, Pastorella is oxidase positive. The sack of Bibles has been here to help you remember that this guy is, in fact, a pastor. But we've also shown it to help you remember that Pastorella is encapsulated. So sack for polysaccharide capsule. Next, notice that we've added a cat sitting right next to the pastor guy. This is his trusty pet who's come along for a stroll next to the Eiffel Tower. Just like in our other images, the cat is in this part of the image to help you remember that Pastorella is catalase positive. This is a picture demonstrating the catalase test, which we covered in more detail in section 7, which was our video on Listeria monocytogenes. Recall that the bubbles right here indicate that the organism is catalase positive. Now you can see that we've shown a pretty nasty stray dog that is biting the poor pastor's leg. We've included the dog here to help you remember that pastorella is transmitted through dog bites. Ouch. Looks like the dog has a pretty gnarly bite. Look at all the blood spewing out onto the ground. We've shown the blood here to help you remember that pastorella grows on 5% blood agar. This is a figure of the three types of hemolysis, which we covered in more detail in section 9, which is our video on Viridans streptococci. There are various types of hemolysis that can be seen on blood agar. However, pastorella doesn't produce hemolysis on blood agar. It just grows on it. So technically, it's gamma hemolytic, which you can see right here. But again, it's most high yield to just know that it grows on 5% sheep blood agar. We can clearly see the dog biting the poor pastor's leg, but he's also scuffed up his arm pretty bad. Notice that the pastor is looking at his arm in horror. This wound on his arm should help you remember that pastorella is associated with animal bites and skin infections. I'm sure that if this pastor guy knew what was going on over by the Eiffel Tower, he would try to help, but obviously he's a bit occupied with the dog and the wounds on his arm and his leg. Okay, now notice that the cat doesn't seem too interested in the dog because it's quite preoccupied with a tasty fish it just caught out of the nearby river. All we can see now are leftover bones and scales. We've used bones and scales in our other images to represent osteomyelitis, so we've included it in this image to help you remember that pastorella causes osteomyelitis. Finally, notice that we've shown a girl sitting on the bench who appears to be intensely reading a Bible. She's so focused on reading that she doesn't notice anything around her, not the pastor guy getting bit by the dog or the granny being held by the joker guy. However, she is kind enough to tip the pastor with a single penny. The penny is here to help you remember that pastorella is treated with penicillin. Okay, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 32-year-old female comes to the office due to a red swollen arm. She recently purchased an extremely hyper dog that bit her on the arm last night as they were playing. Immediately after the injury, she felt fine, so she went to sleep without much concern. However, when she woke up this morning, she noticed the swelling and decided to come to the office. Physical examination is significant for an edematous and erythematous wound on the left arm that is tender to palpation. Cultures of the wound grow gram-negative coccobacilli that are catalase positive. Which of the following is the definitive treatment for the most likely causal organism? A. Daptomycin B. Doxycycline C. Gentamycin or D. Penicillin Hopefully from the question stem you notice that a dog bit this patient on her arm. Also, cultures of the wound grow gram-negative coccobacilli that are catalase positive. Together, this should make you think of pastorella. And recall that the treatment for pastorella is penicillin. So the correct answer is D, penicillin. 
From the image, recall that the lady tipping the pastor guy with the penny right here is to help you remember that pastorella is treated with penicillin. A is incorrect because this is an antibiotic that is typically used to treat infections caused by gram-positive cocci. For example, skin infections caused by Staph aureus. So A is wrong. B is also incorrect. Recall that brucella can be treated with doxycycline, but this is associated with the consumption of unpasteurized milk. So B is incorrect. C is also incorrect. Gentamicin is an aminoglycoside and can be used to treat francisella, but francisella is more commonly associated with exposure to rabbits or deer flies. So C is incorrect. And again, the correct answer is D, penicillin. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know about pastorella multicida, brucella, and francisella tularensis.